the doors of a further education college should open the way towards a place at life's top table, not a seat at the back of the class. They should make real the prospect of a more fulfilled life, a better job, or the opportunity to deepen knowledge by progressing to higher learning. And we will build a closer relationship between higher and further education. And I'm working with David Willits to look at how we can teach more higher education in FE colleges. It's that kind of vision which underpins our strategy for skills. At the heart of how we will put this into practice is our plan for apprenticeships. 250 million pounds more for 75,000 extra apprenticeships. An ambition to create more apprenticeships than ever before. But pivotal as they are, apprenticeships are not all we will do. They're just one aspect of a more equitable approach to sharing out the costs and benefits of training. Our plans also provide for a fully subsidized provision for basic skills, training for young adults, and skills to help unemployed people get and stay in sustainable work. We will also part fund training for people 24 and over at level two, whilst giving access to loans for those individuals aged 24 and over who wish to study at level three or higher. Devoting resource to where it's needed most. With your help, we will get this right. We'll ensure that the most vulnerable get the financial support without which they could not gain new skills. Perhaps, yes, perhaps most important of all, I want to, you to help me tackle the scandalous fact that one in seven of our young people is not in education, employment, or training. I know too that a lot of lip service has been paid over the years to employer involvement in training. And we know, don't we, where that led. It led to train to gain with its immense dead weight cost. What we must do now is to take a more realistic view of what's needed and what's worth paying for. The sort of realism that recognizes that those who reap the benefits of training must be prepared to share the cost. The sort of realism that grasps that small employers are likely to need more help than larger ones to train their staff to build a modern workforce. And the sort of realism that even when overall spending is falling, still fights for funds to create a new growth and innovation fund to support fresh employer-led skills initiatives. Learners' choices will be underpinned by the new qualifications and credit framework, which gives much greater flexibility through new credit-bearing qualifications, helping learners to progress and giving them and employers access to training in a way that meets their needs. We will also develop lifelong learning accounts, encouraging individuals to learn and keep on learning. I want the accounts to drive a national community of learners with the desire to seek out knowledge and skills, sharing their successes with others. And I want you to play your part in building bigger lives. Another change will come with the intensification of colleges' role as community assets. To help make sure this happens, we will both protect and reform the budget for adult safeguarded learning. Above all, in future, the emphasis will be on the primacy of the relationship between colleges and their direct customers, individuals and businesses. Accountability is going to pass from ministers, from the government, to colleges, local communities, to the people you serve best, the people you know best. I really am serious about devolving real power to get the job done. So we will give greater freedom to colleges. Freedom from the unnecessary bureaucracy and regulation that inhibits your ability to frame what you do to suit local learners and employers. I know that the, uh, the regulations, the micromanagement, the form filling, the hoop jumping, the bean counting, which has bedeviled you, has frustrated so much of what you are, what you can be, what you can do for learners, communities and employers. We seek to remove a raft of unnecessary regulations that dictate what you do and how you do it. For example, we intend to remove the legal necessity to promote economic and social well-being of your local area and have regard to prescriptive guidance about consultation. 
Because what college worth its name needs a law to tell it to promote well-being? Social and economic well-being are your stock in trade. We are, very simply, looking to make it easier for you to do what I know you want to do, what you do already, despite the system. And by the way, we are looking to make it easier for you to borrow, to invest. We want to move towards creating a dynamic skill system, which is led by colleges who in turn work with learners and businesses to deliver the education and training provision they really need. Now, I don't, uh, I don't pretend that change on this scale will be easy, nor that it won't make extra demands on you. It will require new creative thinking. Representative bodies like this one will need to take collective responsibility for sector improvement, working through the Learning and Skills Improvement Service. But I believe strongly in the professionalism of the sector, the importance of a qualified workplace, and the power of a peer-to-peer -peer approach in supporting quality improvement. It will also mean colleges working together more to reduce costs, for example, through more efficient collaboration in the delivery of back office and front office functions. Though let me be clear, there is a role for smaller rural and specialist providers too. So rest assured, I don't see mergers as the only solution. And the government devolving power will not mean the government absolving itself of responsibility. Where colleges are failing, we will act, opening up opportunities to others in the independent and private sector to get involved. I don't want to leave you today merely thinking that the spending review wasn't as bad as some people expected, although, by the way, it wasn't. Reform would have been desirable even if we hadn't inherited an unsustainable fiscal deficit. We've been planning these kind of changes for years, and we built change on what we learned from you. The strategy we have launched at this conference was not just the result of a long consultation over the summer, though many valuable submissions, including from the AOC, more than 500 submissions, by the way, in all, have helped to inform our thinking. No, as many as you know, this strategy is as much the result of a much longer period of consultation, of discussion, of deliberation, which began when David Cameron appointed me Shadow Minister five years ago next month. Five years to build my understanding of the invaluable contribution made by FE to our economy and our society, the great unheralded triumph of the education system now heralded by this government and this strategy. I know there is immense human capital in the sector, yet, let's be frank, the last government infantilized further education. It directed, micromanaged, and encumbered FE. Well, it's time to treat you as grown up, to set you free, free from the technocrats, from the dull utilitarianism, from the stifling bureaucracy. I want you to leave Berman excited by the prospect of change. Know at last there is a government that understands further education and that prioritizes skills. A government that trusts you, my trust, learners' trust. Play your part in taking our movement forward. Be worthy of that trust. Let none of us be content until everyone embraces our creed that wherever you begin, whatever your background and whatever your circumstances, learning can make a difference, can indeed ignite a fire. Learning brightens lives and warms hearts. So leave this conference with a glow of professionals at last trusted to do your best, to be your best. Thank you so much.